Hello everyone, we are a group of students from the DBT program in the College of Medical Rehabilitation in Qasim University. We made this video as our group project for our Biochemistry 1 class. This project is supervised by Professor Nahid Banu. Note that timestamps for each experiment is in the description box of this video. This video is related to carbohydrates and is going to include the following lab tests. Molish's test, iodine test, Fehling's test, Benedict's test, Barfoid's test, Suranov's test. In the lab, please remember to wear your lab coat as well as your gloves. And if the experiment includes heating, hold the test tube with a clamp from the edge to prevent it from falling. While heating, point the test tube to the wall, window, or anywhere far from yourself and anyone in the lab. Remember to handle acids in the hood and be really cautious. Use a pipette for each solution and never interchange. Starting with Molish's test, which is going to show us the presence of carbohydrates. In this experiment, we chose fructose as our choice of carbohydrates. Add two drops of Molish's reagent to two mils of the test solution. and shake well. Take the rest of the experiment to the hood as we're going to use concentrated sulfuric acid. Hold the test tube at a slanted angle with the clamp making sure you're holding the clamp from the edge and then add one mil of concentrated sulfuric acid very slowly and then when the sulfuric acid drips down to the bottom start to straighten the test tube very slowly. You're going to observe a violet ring at the junction of the two liquids. The presence of the ring is indicating the presence of carbohydrates. Moving to iodine test, which is going to show us the presence of starch. Add a few drops of iodine solution to the test tube. Then add one mil of the sample solution. If it is starch, you are going to see an immediate change of color to a deep blue or black color. Now we're adding a few drops of iodine to the test tube and then we're adding one mil of sucrose just so you can see the negative result of this test. With sucrose or any other carbohydrate other than starch, you're not going to observe any change in color. It might be lighter due to the dilution of iodine, but you won't experience change in color. Moving on to Fehling's test, which is going to show us the presence of reducing sugar. You're going to need Fehling A and Fehling B solutions, as well as a non-reducing sugar like sucrose and a reducing sugar like glucose. Add 1 mL of Fehling A solution, then 1 mL of Fehling B solution. Make sure that the amounts are equal. Make sure to shake well. Then add a few drops of glucose, which is a reducing sugar. And then shake well. Then, you're going to very carefully heat while shaking. Be patient, it's going to turn into a red color. We took a time lapse for this process. The change of the color to red is indicating the presence of a reducing sugar. Repeat the same process but with a non-reducing sugar like sucrose. Add 1 mL of filling A and 1 mL of filling B and shake well. Add a few drops of a non-reducing sugar like sucrose and shake well.
then carefully heat while shaking. You're not going to observe any change in color, no matter how long you heat, since this is a non-reducing sugar. But it's really important to try and see for yourself to be exam ready. Solution on the left is a reducing sugar, solution on the right is a non-reducing sugar. Moving on to Benedict's test, which also aims to identify if the following sugar is a reducing or a non-reducing sugar. You're going to need Benedict's reagent in a reducing sugar like fructose and in non-reducing sugar like sucrose. Add 2 ml of Benedict's reagent. Add 5 drops of a reducing sugar like fructose. Shake well. Then carefully heat in a water bath for 5 minutes. Be patient and shake while you are heating. You are going to observe a change of color into red, which is indicating the presence of a reducing sugar. The color might vary from a bright orange to red to a reddish brown, depending on the reducing sugar you chose. As we used fructose, it turned out to be a really bright orange reddish color. This is the result for a reducing sugar. Repeat the same steps but this time with a non-reducing sugar like sucrose. So add 2 ml of Benedict reagent and 5 drops of sucrose. Shake well. Then very carefully heat while shaking. Since you used a non-reducing sugar like sucrose, you're not going to observe any change in color. Moving on to Barfoid's test, which aims to identify if the sugar is a monosaccharide or a disaccharide. You're going to need Barfoid's reagent and a monosaccharide sugar like glucose and fructose. Add 2 ml of Barfoid's reagent. Then add 1 ml of a monosaccharide sugar like fructose. Carefully heat while shaking. You will start to see the formation of small red particles at the top of the test tube, which indicates that the sugar is a monosaccharide. If it is a disaccharide or a polysaccharide, you won't see any red particles. Moving on to Solanov's test, which aims to identify if the monosaccharide sugar is a ketose or an aldose. You will need Solanov's reagent as well as monosaccharide sugar like glucose or fructose. In this case, we used fructose, which is a ketose. Add 2 drops of fructose to 2 ml of Solanov's reagent. After heating, the color of the solution will turn into a deep red color. This indicates that the fructose is a ketose. We tried with glucose, which is an aldose, it turned out to be light pink. Thank you for watching. We hope this video helped you.